Ironman Coeur d'Alene is making a comeback this year. It'll not only be the biggest Ironman yet in the Lake City, it'll also be the hottest with triple digits in the forecast. And that means all hands on deck for first responders. And with those temperatures in the forecast, local utilities are bracing for a lot of demand on the grid. Why they say our systems in a good position as we head toward that record heat. We start though with some breaking news at this hour. Firefighters still at the scene of a car fire that spread to a nearby pawn shop. This was near the intersection of North Monroe and Dalton, right behind the Zips restaurant. It broke out at around 930 tonight. This video from the scene is from viewer Shanoa Ellsworth. Appreciate that video, by the way. Fire crews remain on the scene at this hour to make sure there are no flare ups from this fire. Right now, North Monroe is also closed and crews tell us that it will remain closed for a couple more hours. Thankfully, no one was reported injured during this fire. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem 2 News at 11 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. We want to start with weather tonight because we are expecting extreme heat to hit the inland northwest. We could see the hottest temperatures ever in Spokane. Several heat advisories have already been put into place. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick joining us from the Outdoor Weather Center tonight. And Thomas, our high today was 89 degrees. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that come Monday, we could see temperatures 20 degrees hotter than today. Yeah, when you first said that at 10 o'clock, even I had a hard time wrapping my head around that. This is going to be an incredible heat wave for the area as we are expecting not only triple digit heat, but potentially one tens in some regions of the inland northwest. Excessive heat watches pretty much for the entire state, save for the Washington coast, as we are going to experience not just some daily record highs, but perhaps some of the hottest weather we've ever had on record for our area. And here's the reason large area, intense area of high pressure going to develop pretty much park right on top of the Pacific Northwest. So our temperature are just going to soar. Like you said, 89 was our high today, forecasting 108 for this upcoming Monday. That would tie the all time record high temperature in Spokane's history, and it might not just be Spokane. Obviously, you see some of the one tens that are already in the forecast. So coming up, going to detail just how many different records could be falling in this historic heat wave that we are forecasting for this weekend and early next week. All right, we'll talk to you in a few moments. Thank you very much, Thomas. The extreme heat comes as 3000 athletes are going to compete in Ironman and Coeur d'Alene. It is a brutal test of endurance, stretching 140 miles between the swim, the bike, and the run. Grandview's Morgan Trout was in Coeur d'Alene tonight, where final preparations are now underway. Mark, yes, these are all volunteers behind me who are helping to set up the Coeur d'Alene Ironman Village. Come tomorrow, thousands of athletes will be signing up right here. And that's 3,000 people who are coming in to swim, bike, and run in 100 degree, more than 100 degree weather. So not only will it be potentially the biggest race we've ever had here, it will also be the hottest. It will be all hands on deck this Sunday for the Coeur d'Alene Fire Department. Definitely worried about both the athletes and the spectators with the potentially record setting temperatures. The city is supposed to hit triple digits on Sunday, which itself would be incredible. But the same day, the largest race in Coeur d'Alene history is taking place. More than 3000 people are participating in the Ironman triathlon. But CDA Fire EMS officer Scott Dietrich says the athletes are not who he is most worried about. Runners have been hopefully training for this for a while and have learned how to adequately replace what they're expending. What we're worried about is all the spectators and the volunteers. Anyone who is out in the sun, but specifically the elderly and pediatric populations, could get sick from the heat. He says the fire department sees a significant increase in dehydration calls during Ironman normally. But with the temperatures this year, they are bumping up the resources. 60 firefighters and EMS personnel will be on the clock monitoring the event. Other fire jurisdictions and ambulance crews are helping out. But he says you can help as well. Rather than waiting until you're thirsty and drinking a whole bunch, drink small amounts of fluids continuously throughout the day. Hydration is key here. He says normally you want to drink eight glasses of water a day, but with these temperatures, you may want to double it. And although all of the entries are filled, so that is more than 3000 people, they are still in need of volunteers, especially for the aid stations. So we need those people to be given out water and making sure people are hydrated. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, you're going to want to go online and register. Reporting in Coeur d'Alene, Morgan Trow, Crem 2 News. Odds are you're going to be running your AC a whole lot this week. Utility companies say we use more power keeping ourselves cool than warm in the winter. And there are some things, though, you can do to help keep those costs down. Shift your use. So if you've got to run laundry or do dishes and run your dishwasher, think about doing that in the off hours, late at night when things are cooler. 
early in the morning. Um, capture that cool nighttime air. So turn off your air conditioning at night, open your windows. Those things are small things that can make a big difference in your power bill. The good news is, unlike some of the outages we've seen in Texas, for example, Washington shares a power grid with other states and can rely on them if our system is overwhelmed this weekend. By the way, if you'd like more information about this week's heat wave, ways to stay cool and how to save money on your energy bill, just text us the word heat to 509-448-2000 and we'll send that link directly to your phone. The Little Pine Fire in Bonner County is still 0% contained tonight. It grew to 321 acres overnight. The fire is burning seven miles north of Priest River in Pine Creek. Additional resources and crews have arrived throughout the day. And as they try to put it out, a Type 3 incident management team will assume command of that fire starting tomorrow morning. The good news is no structures are threatened and no evacuations or road closures are in place at this time. Earlier tonight, a car completely engulfed in flames on I-90 at the Hamilton exit. Flames spread to nearby brush in the median as well. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. As you can see, firefighters were quickly able to put that fire out. They say the car's engine caught on fire and then quickly spread. Nobody was hurt in that fire. Meantime, the Kootenai County Fire Chiefs Association has announced new burn restrictions going to affect Friday at midnight. Burning will be closed for all fires except recreational fires in an approved fire pit. It's because the extreme temperatures and low humidity could create catastrophic fire conditions. Outdoor recreational fires are only legal if they're no larger than three feet wide and two feet tall. They can only be used for pleasure, religious, ceremonial, cooking, warmth, or similar purposes. Recreational fires shall not be conducted within 25 feet of a structure or combustible material. Fires shall be constantly attended to until that fire is fully extinguished. New tonight, a pair of Hayden homeowners were shocked when they came home from a barbecue to find their dog had been shot in the eye with a pellet gun. According to our news partners, the Coeur Lane Press, Christian and Jade Harlocker received an alert from their outdoor security camera. They told the paper that when they came home, they found their dog hiding in the brush with both of his eyes swollen shut. When they took him to the vet, x-rays showed that a pellet was lodged into his eye socket. The dog's eye ultimately had to be removed. The owners told police their neighbor admitted to them that he shot the dog, but since there were no witnesses to the incident, at this point, no charges are filed. The Harlockers, however, say they do plan to pursue a civil case. Tonight in Spokane Public Schools board meeting, the three new potential names for Sheridan Elementary School were revealed. Those three options are Francis Scott, East Central, and Unity Elementary School. The SPS was looking for a name that would represent a logical association with the school, a significant individual or prominent local geographic feature. So we will let you know when they choose that final name. An Idaho man who nearly or who did drown while trying to save his three young cousins is being honored for his heroism. 34 year old Kaawi Michael Pistana has been honored with a Carnegie Medal. That medal is given to people in the U.S. and Canada who risk their lives to an extraordinary degree, saving or attempting to save the lives of others. So the incident happened back in April of 2019 when Pistana, who is deaf and could not speak, jumped into the Salmon River to try to save his cousins after their father and their canoe tipped over. Pistana was pulled into a circular current and drowned in the river. All three children and their father were able to get out safely about a half mile down the river. The medal is considered the highest civilian honor for heroism. A vigil was held tonight for the man killed in a crash on East Trent Avenue yesterday morning. Brandon McDonald was killed yesterday after that car he was in crashed around East Trent Avenue near North Napa Street. He was found dead when officers arrived at the scene. The woman driving the car, 28 year old Selena Juarez, was charged with vehicular homicide and made her first court appearance today. McDonald would have been 40 years old in July. We spoke to his mother at the suspect's court hearing earlier today. I want her to pay for killing my son. All he said was that she was trying to kill him with her driving and then the phone went dead. Spokane police believe impairment may have been a factor in the crash. The Spokane County Medical Examiner has not yet released McDonald's cause of death. Vehicular homicide, by the way, is a class A felony in Washington and punishable by up to life in prison and or a maximum fine of $50,000. Last night, we showed you exclusive video of body camera footage of the night the WSU freshman Sam Martinez died. Next, why investigators say friends and witnesses were reluctant to hand over information.